Welcome to the Tara Talk Podcast, a place for honest and open conversations to support you in living your best life from the inside out. Join me on this journey of self-discovery as we explore what it means to reach next level badassery and cut through the BS. So tune in, stay a while, and I promise I'll be right here alongside you as we figure the shit out together. Meg squats, ladies and gentlemen, also known as Meg Gallagher. I will also tell you that I actually didn't know Meg's last name. So she was in my phone as Meg Squats up until literally yesterday when I put her name in there as Meg Gallagher. She is the queen of the online fitness world and she's been someone that I've looked up to for so long. I'm so excited to have you on the show. Mrs. Meg Gallagher, how are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super stoked. I haven't done a podcast in forever. So if I'm rusty, bear with me. She's going to be great. And I will just let you know that she just bought these headphones and mic right before (laughs) this podcast, which I feel very honored that she did that. But we just spent about 15 minutes trying to figure out how to plug in the headphones into the right jack in the computer, but we figured it out. And so she sounds good today. I'm good at getting strong. I'm not so good at technical things on the computer. So we already know that. Um, so speaking of getting strong, you run several businesses. You've got stronger by the day fitness app. You've got Havico, which I hope I'm saying that right. Yeah. Havico, mm-hmm. um, which is like weightlifting equipment. And then you've got buff chicks, which is your supplement line. So tell us who is Meg Gallagher and what do you do? Like, who are you? Yeah. So I've been in the fitness industry for about 10 years and over that decade, almost I've started a few businesses And it all started because I really fell in love with strength training and I had very few people in my life outside of my gym friends who knew about strength training. And I made it my personal mission to make sure everyone in the world learns about it. Okay. So I'm hopefully I'm going to die knowing that I did my part in trying to embrace strength training and demystify and simplify it so that more people can start their own strength journeys. So Luckily, that's meant, you know, I've been able to make it my life, meaning that it's not just what I do in the gym. I get to work with a ton of people and helping them in their strength journeys through Stronger by the Day, which is my app. And I've have, I'm very blessed and the team and I have worked really hard to get over 20,000 people as active members in Stronger by the Day. So that's just awesome that we get to at least know that we're helping that many people. It's kind of hard to quantify once you get up to those numbers, but it's very rewarding work. And I know the role that my strength journey, how pivotal that was for me and how many things it improved in my life. So I really just am dedicated to getting more people in the door and, or on the side of the weights, which can be really intimidating for people if they don't have someone in their life to kind of get them started. How did you originally get into strength training then? Well, I, like most people, well, for me, I can only speak for myself, but I know a lot of my clients start training because they want the perfect body. And that was 100% mm-hmm. me. I wanted the perfect body. And everyone has their own vision of what the perfect body looks like. And for my millennials, this will stick out to you. I wanted to look like Britney Spears during the VMAs when she had the snake. I oh, forget yeah. what song she performed, but that was iconic, right? This and I think is, I was... Um... I'm a slave for you. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. of course. How could I forget? Yeah. How could um, she just looked so she's beautiful. And she obviously she was like so sexy during that moment. And yeah. she's more or less skinny and, but she has abs. And I, I just wanted for so long, I wanted abs. And I felt even though I was athletic and really active of a person and really into sports, I could never figure out how to get abs on myself. And so that was my mission to get into fitness. I was like, I'm going to get abs. I'm going to get my perfect Britney Spears. I'm a slave for you body. And that started a, you know, I embarked on learning about exercise science and learning about, um, nutrition a lot. And I achieved my perfect body and I got it. I looked I don't want to say I looked exactly like Britney Spears, but I had abs, my version of the perfect body. And I had it for like one day. And then I realized, oh, like I'm no happier. My body image is no better. I have this perfect body, but that's all really I have to show for all the work and sacrifice that I've done in so many other areas of my life. So that, you know, moment, I really had to look at what I was doing and why I was training 
And I leaned on strength to kind of get me out of that really aesthetic goal um, focus that I was stuck in for so long. And strength was really the light out of, out of that, which it massively changed my life for the better. Whereas my journey to the perfect body and even the success of reaching that goal really did nothing for me. It really just ruined a lot of things, actually. What were you doing actually to get that quote unquote perfect body, Britney Spears well, body? Uh, well, I have a great program for you if anybody's interested. No, just kidding. Um, I was really restricting a lot of food, of course. I was doing cardio. I was basically on a bodybuilder's like journey. So I was adding a lot of cardio. I was eating very little carbs and counting my macros, very diligent with counting everything and weighing and measuring and tracking everything, which can, for some people, thrive off of that. I am not one of those people. And it was a lot of restriction and intentionally dieting down to get lower and lower body weights. And yeah, it was typically what you do for to go on stage. Look. Exactly. And I know that you have the, um, a past like eating kind of binge eating or you have an eating story. Do you feel like it stemmed from getting that quote unquote perfect body or where does, where did that come from? Oh, 100%, 100%. That is where after that moment and I looked at my life, I, you know, on my way to getting that ideal physique, I started to pop up binge eating episodes and I did it in secret. I didn't want anyone to know because I was getting so much social support and compliments on how much I've changed and how great I looked. So I didn't want anyone to know that I was also hunched over my trash can eating a jar of peanut butter. And that was something that I struggled with after it. Luckily for me, you know, when that started happening and also the realization that I wasn't any happier after achieving this thing that I'd wanted for so long, which is basically just abs, I knew that something had to change. Unfortunately, you know, binge eating turned into a lot of weight gain. I think I gained like 54 pounds, like immediately after I want to say like five weeks after I'd gained 50 pounds or something crazy like that. And, um, I really wasn't comfortable doing some of the exercises that I were doing before. So I would literally go into the gym and I would warm up and I would squat and then I would leave. And then the next day I would go into the gym, I would warm up, squat, and then leave. And I probably did that for weeks and weeks and weeks until finally I added in like one or two more exercises. Um, but that one movement is really why I changed my name to make squats because I was on the squat only program, squat only journey now. And I was able to really focus in on, okay, I'm just going to have this one lift and I'm going to try to get really good at it. And I'm going to try to get really strong at it. And let's see where we go. Mm -hmm. And of course I was gaining weight. So it's just like a little bit easier to move weight when you're, as you're gaining um, your own body mass. So yeah, that was my story. That was how I became Meg squats. And that's that was my my transition going into strength training specifically was really starting at my lowest point. So a lot of times, and I'm sure a lot of trainers have the story of, you know, how we got into strength, how we got into our own fitness journey. And it is really like when we were at like the bottom, we were at rock bottom because we knew that there was another way out, but we didn't really know how to get there. And so when you say like, that's how I got into strength training, like what was actually happening in your life? Was there community? Was there like a support system or how did you know, like, I know I need to make a change? Well, I did. My friends at this time were gym friends because I was still always at the gym, obviously. Mm -hmm. And that was the only place that I went. So luckily I had a good support system who during this journey, they didn't exactly understand what I was doing. I was on a I was bodybuilding and, um, and the, and the terrible part of bodybuilding, we we're just dieting. <laughs> it was just really just yeah. dieting. I wasn't building much. So the friends that I had at the gym who were training alongside me were important people in my life, but I would avoid seeing them out in social events because I didn't want to be around food. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I was more and more, I was isolating myself despite being a part of an uplifting community which as I got out of that hole, you know, I could embrace them more, but I really did it by myself um, in a lot of ways and definitely not in a good way. I wish I could have told someone or I wish I would have told someone because then I could have opened up about what was really going on that I was dealing with a lot of food issues. Um, and I would, 
I know that many of them would say, I think you need to talk to a professional because I wish I would have done that so much earlier in my journey because I really yeah. just wasted a lot of time trying to keep it secret. Do you have any regrets about that? Oh, well, yes, 100%. Yeah. I missed my friend's wedding because I was dieting. And, you know, it was not like my best ride or die friend that I've ever had in my life, but she invited me to be a part of her wedding mm. and I didn't, I had to decline. And that's really embarrassing. You know, like that's just so sad. And that's the reality that so many people have. They avoid events all the time because they're nervous about what food is going to be there or they're nervous about what someone's going to say about what they they choose to eat. So I, and I know you've talked about that recently about being around family and it's, it sucks how much, how many moments that can just eat up. And then you, you leave a place and that's all you can think about is like, Oh God, it's, it's all about that one freaking comment that someone said. And it sucks that yeah. it can just ruin, it can ruin shit for you and it sucks. Yeah. It's so triggering and it brings up so many, so much like past trauma. I think like the cool thing about where we're at now as being millennials in our, you know, mid thirties, that is that we have like these tools and resources to utilize when things like that come up again. So when, what was like the first event or something that you went to when you feel like you finally had like this, like kind of, you had a grasp on your food and nutrition? And well, how it's definitely, that that's definitely a gradual journey where I remember, you know, it had been maybe years and I would say, oh my God, I remember, I remember two months ago, I would have been so stressed about this. Yeah. Or, and you keep saying that and you're like, oh, remember like a couple of weeks ago, this would have wrecked me. And you can just notice gradually you start to improve, whether it be your body image or your habits or your inclination. I mean, when someone's struggling with a eating disorder, a binge eating disorder, which is super common, it's like, you don't have the control. Like your brain doesn't tell your hand to stop eating um, and stop putting food right to your mouth and it freaking sucks. Um, but it is a funny, a funny thing to witness because you can only look back and say, Oh, I thought I was healed then, but actually today, like I can tell you I'm even more healed. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if there was ever a moment, but it is a gradual realization of like every two weeks you're sort of checking in and saying like, Oh, I'm, I'm still getting better. I can't believe like Oh, I'm, I'm finally free. And then two weeks later, you're like, no, 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 this is the freedom that I was like searching for. Do you still feel like you have those times today, even with different journeys, not with this one. Um, okay. so I think you do get to a point where, and maybe it's years later where you're really okay. Um, I can compare it though, to the journey of being postpartum when you're healing and your body's literally healing. Um, I would have that same kind of reflection where I'd be like, oh my God, now I feel like myself. And then weeks would pass. No, now I feel like myself. So it's funny. I mean, I don't know if you can compare an injury or healing from postpartum recovery to having an eating disorder, but I guess it's healing from anything. Yeah. Um, you, you do start to really lose who you are in that moment, um, with postpartum, it's like losing the sensation of like what it feels like to be in my normal body. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I kept get learning like, Oh no, this is it again. So especially when you're in a disorder, like binge eating, you forget what it's like to be on the other side of it. Yeah. And body image is so interesting, especially like, I'm sure as you have a child, right? And I haven't, and I know you're very, you're certified in pre and postnatal, and I'd love to get more into that. But sometimes I think about having a kid and I'm, I get really scared because I don't want to feel the body image or insecurities that have come up when I used to binge eat and when I had a lot of those issues that came up. So do you, did you have that when you were pregnant and postpartum? I think I was really ready to have a child and ready for the fluctuation that comes with it. Mm -hmm. And also I did remind myself a lot, like bodies are meant to shrink and grow. Bodies are meant to grow. Bodies are meant to change. And that mantra helped me in a lot of ways, but I, you know, dealt with a miscarriage and I was like desperate to be pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I think my mind was more there than 
you know, your priorities change too. That's not to say it does for everyone um, because body image is still real, regardless of if you're really focused on having a baby. Um, But for me, the desire of a new life and the mantras that I used helped a lot. Okay. And I'm sure, and you have a little girl, she's two, right? Correct. And I'm sure that you also want to raise her in a way that she feels comfortable and safe and confident in her body always. Do you have anything that you tell her? Do you do any mantras or intentions with her yet? No, not yet, but we're pretty intentional with, we've we've always been this way, even since not having a kid, but I've been around certain families, maybe even in my own family when I was a kid, where it was very normal to talk about how people looked and shame people for how, what size they were skinny or fat. Um, that's just not an appropriate topic. I mean, anyone who knows me, I would be shocked if someone started saying something along those lines in front of me, especially if they knew me, it was just like, Oh, we don't, we don't talk about that. Like I'm, you know, you're not going to get anything from me. So I think being intentional there and in our own life, just setting what is grounds for discussing when you're talking about someone is important. Um, that way, you know, I I know at the time people, adults that were around me would have never said anything insulting about me and my body, but that doesn't change. You know, I'm saying those things to myself. So when I hear you talking about someone who's not here or someone that we don't know, I know that that conversation is on the table. So that's really the only thing that we do right now. Her language is developing quickly though. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, also compliments. We, I don't know how much you can talk about how attractive a two-year-old is, but like, it is really common to say like, oh, you're so beautiful. But ensuring that it's not just about how she looks. I always tell people how you look is the least interesting thing about you. And I want my daughter to grow up understanding that and understanding our values of a family are far beyond anything that could be staring her back in the mirror. So I know you are, you have a lot of knowledge in pre and postnatal. Was that, did you want to get into that because of you getting pregnant or what was like the, the background on that sort of education? Yes. When I got pregnant, I started studying more. Um, You know, you have this, I'm sure you have this experience, anything that you're going through, let's say you decide to, I was going to say start running, but you are a former runner. So (laughs) you wouldn't really start doing that. Um, But let's say you wanted to do um, jujitsu or something. And I don't know if you're, you seem like someone who would do something badass like that already, but you know that your audience and the people who trust you are going to ask you so many questions about it. And so while I was in my first trimester and, you know, kind of keeping it under wraps and not telling anybody that I was pregnant and making my announcement, I wanted to come to the table with a certification and some knowledge and know-how before I got those inevitable questions. So another regret that I have is not doing it sooner because I do feel like probably the mo- the the best act of feminism that we as personal trainers could probably do is get a pre and postnatal cert or get a menopause cert, something to where we can support women at all ages. And I think that's something that's not really discussed or, or it's just a population that's overlooked entirely. Um, but being able to be there for your clients is, you know, that's pretty badass. And we want to support women in all their many facets. And pregnancy is just a thing that lots of women end up doing. Yeah. I, um, on the podcast that just went live this week, um, we had a menopause person come in. We talked all about that. And I feel like there's a lot of people, a lot of trainers out there that do some pre and postnatal stuff, but not as much menopause. And I think that there's definitely a huge audience there as well. So what are you doing? I know you have some sort of course or something with pre and postnatal. How, what does that look like? Tell us about it. Do you mean the course, the like certification course that I took? No, the, um, you have a program, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have an app. It's called Plus One. So the Plus One app is an app specifically for prenatal and even trying to conceive population to where they can join and start to learn some of the things that you might consider as you are planning to get pregnant. Especially if you're strength training, there are a couple of things that aren't necessarily contraindications, but are just choices that you need to make at a certain point. So 
Priority wise, we keep in mind our pelvic floor is probably the most important hot topic. And it's something that most strength trainees don't really think much about before they Mm -hmm. enter in this phase of life. So when you're lifting really heavy, we all know the term intra-abdominal pressure, that pressure is pushing down on your pelvic floor. And as you're growing a human, you have more and more pressure on that pelvic floor. So there are some strategies to protect the pelvic floor in regards to intra-abdominal pressure and pressure management. And we really focus on that pressure management topic, the overall strength component and how high intensity you might want to go. And also the core and preparing for giving birth and also preparing for postpartum and understanding some techniques that might engage your entire core, um, especially your TVA, your transverse abdominis, which we often don't think about before pregnancy. Some people do, but lots of people don't. Yes. Um, I will tell you also, I am not pregnant and have never been pregnant, not trying to be pregnant, but I just went to a pelvic floor therapist for the first time and I learned a lot. (laughs) Yeah. I, you know, you like, don't realize how much is happening, like just on a daily basis. And I do feel like every woman should go see a pelvic floor therapist just to like, understand what your pelvic floor is doing. Like there's so many things happening. Yes. I got really lucky with my pelvic floor PT and maybe had the same experience experience because I told her I'm a trainer. And so, oh, she broke out all the models and she's like, so this is doing this. And she taught me so much. It was really, I felt like I should have paid her more than just my visit because she taught me so much. And I know I don't expect everyone to nerd out in that way, but it is crazy that it is a breathing muscle. And so you are using your pelvic floor. I think you breathe like 50,000 times a day or something crazy. Like you have an opportunity to use it at least 50,000 times a day, which is crazy. Um, and you can adjust some things that with your breath or with, you know, just a small, tiny adjustment that can make a huge difference in your strength. Yeah. It's just so crazy. That's the same thing. Like I learned so much and I have like so many things that I want to like dive deeper into, but it's, it's so necessary, especially women that do strength train or strength train very heavy, like powerlifters. And I know you've done some powerlifting in the past, but you're not doing any now to, can you talk to us a little bit about like your, the competitions that you've done in the past? Yeah, sure. I classify myself as a washed up power lifter because it's been a few years now. Um, My last competition was in 2018 at USA Powerlifting Nationals. So I was very, very dedicated for from the years of, I think, 2014, basically when I started that squat every day kind of program that eventually evolved into actually adding deadlift and bench at the very least. And I started powerlifting and getting really into the competition side. Um, and I loved it. I loved the community. I had so much fun doing it. Um, and by the time 2018 came around, I, I really wanted to break into like the top 10 of my weight class. And I was just always missing it every year. Um, but that was like my goal, my journey that I was embarking on during the time and, uh, never quite got there, but I, in 2018, during my last competition, I was just kind of ready to, for the next chapter of life and started a lot with my business. That was when stronger by the day started and stronger by the day really started as like an off season powerlifters program. It was my program. Um, and now it is, has evolved into a strength training program that I would still recommend for off-season power lifters and, um, something that prioritizes the squat bench and deadlift. Also, we have overhead press and hip thrust, which we've added over the years. So, yeah, I mean, I was trying to be competitive, but it is crazy how much the sport has exploded. And I look at the girls' numbers now, and I am shocked. Every day, I am just shocked at how crazy strong all of these women are who are still competing. Some of them still my friends from back when I used to compete, and they're still going strong. And it is insane how strong people can really get. I just can't even believe it. So remind me, did you play any sports in high school or college? I played basketball. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. You played basketball. So I ran track, right. And I, I won state in Colorado in 20, 
got 20, 2007, 2007. This is a long time ago. 20? No, I'm just old now. So anyways, the, the number that I ran though in 2007 is now like for the 200 meter is like two seconds, two full seconds faster. Like it's just crazy how much faster, stronger, more agile, more power, like people have in 2023. It's like, it's crazy. No, I was just going to say, well, they needed you first to show them what was possible at the time yeah. and that you did that. And then, you know, the, the youth, they just keep on going. So oh, the youth, it's like, um, you know, I met Meg in September and we reminisced a lot cause we're right around the same age. And it's just crazy. Like how, when you get into your thirties, you think it's like so old, but now we're here and we're like, we feel young, but at the same time, high school was 16 years ago. It's just like this, this weird phase in life. And I don't know if you feel this too, where I'm just like, I don't feel old, but I don't feel young, but so much time has passed. Well, you know, they surveyed people of older ages, seniors and beyond, like people up to a hundred. And they asked them, if you could go back to any age, what would that age be? And the most common answer was 36 wow, because okay. they felt like they were at a certain point in their life to where they were satisfied with career and family or satisfied with their friends, satisfied with who they were and the growth that they'd experienced as a person. And their bodies still felt good. Not like 20, but who wants to be in a 20 year old body when you, with a 20 year old brain? No one, no, no offense to my 20 year old listeners, but I'm just telling you, <laughs> you have lots to look forward to lots of growth to look forward to. So much so, growth, so much to look forward to. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm saying that because we're in our prime now. Yeah. Feels good. I feel it feels good awesome. It. Yeah. But also like there, there is so much that the 20 year olds of today that, that they have and learned that we didn't like, I feel like there's, they're learning a lot more at a younger age, starting businesses, doing so much more. And so sometimes there's that like comparison of like, Oh, I should be doing more, or I could be doing more based on what they know. Do you ever feel like that? Um, I always think, oh, I wish I would have started doing cool stuff on TikTok forever ago. But do I ever get jealous of the Gen Zers of today? I didn't say jealous, Meg. <laughs> now you're throwing words in my mouth. I'm definitely not jealous, but I'm like, oh, they actually know a lot more than I did. Or more along the lines of like, I think you said you there's a couple of things that you regret, like with food or with your friend's wedding. I actually started my business in 2018 too. And I'm like, oh, I wish I started that earlier. I wish I started TikTok a little bit earlier. Your pre and postnatal course. My course has been sitting here for a couple of months. I'm like, I got to get in that. Like, those are the kind of things that I'm like, I wish I started this a little earlier. Well, yeah, I wish I started everything earlier because then, well, one week, if we would have started YouTube in like 2006, when you were busy breaking state records, <laughs> we would be completely different people. I mean, that's all in hindsight. I am jealous of the, there's so many badass women on social media now, and you sort of have like different flavors of badass women now. So yeah. there's always someone that you feel like you can connect to. And I hope that that means young girls, they, you know, instead of dreaming to be, look like Britney Spears, as I was doing when I was a kid, they can dream to look like someone who is super powerful in different ways or is super fast. And you know, I think that's the great thing about social media. And that really is just, we're lucky that the next generation of women can hopefully avoid some of these pitfalls that we fell into because we were so obsessed with looking a certain way that may not have been ideal for our body type. Um, Britney Spears and I do not have the same body. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just like, I hope that they're all a little more aware, not that they don't have their own generational issues, yeah. um, but it is cool to see some of the women that there are out there too, for others to look up to. Who are you most inspired or motivated by right now? You know, have you ever met Molly Galbraith? No. Okay. She's my friend. She's the founder of Girls Gone Strong. I am her biggest fangirl because she has really done her part in you know, she has a, a company that encourages strength and it, 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 she brings all these experts in to create her certification programs. She's the one who I went through her pre and postpartum certification program. And 
She is just such a great writer. She always motivates me with what she's writing and the things that she's sharing. Um, she's been able to create an awesome business and she does it with so much integrity. And you can just, you know, when you meet someone and you can just kind of see their values, like you, like they have words over their head where you can like see like integrity and like autonomy. And she really brings that to the table when you get the chance to speak with her. And, you know, I'm on my own journey of going back to talking about some of the things that I used to talk, talk about years ago. And that's kind of why I'm doing more podcasts because I want to have more conversations about some of my values and some of my like mission statements. Um, but it is cool to get to see her and you can just, yeah, you can, you totally get who she is from just having a meal with her and like having a simple conversation. So she's really inspiring to me. And she's one of those people, as you see her go up, she's like bringing you with her. And I love that about her. She's like, always like, no, come on, we're, we're all going together. Yeah. I follow her and she's the one that I got the course from too. Cause I think you were posting about it or someone was, and I'm, I'm super excited to dive in. There's just so much information in there. It's like, I want to really get into it, but she seems like an awesome human. That's for sure. I've just never met her in, in real life. She was at your wedding though, I think. Right. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, good friend of yours. Um, all right. So you were talking about your values and you want to podcast again, cause you want to like get more into your values. So what is like one of your main values that you have talked about in the past and want to like kind of bring up again? Well, when I say I got away from them, I think I just got really obsessed with talking about the technical side of strength and I'm missing, or I was missing for a long time, part of the why and the story. Okay. Yes, I get it. You use a squat to get bigger legs and to get stronger. That's cool. You squat 300. Cool. Great why? <laughs> like, here's how to squat 300, but why would I want to do that? And I think I, you know, was so focused on always like creating content that's going to be helpful to people. And I forgot about motivating people. I mean, my vision is to get a barbell in every woman's hands. Like I can see that as a future where you walk into a gym and it's a bunch of badass chicks and they're all lifting heavy weights and there's no intimidation factor between the new girls trying to get in on the side. It's, it's community and it's approachable that, you know, that's the future that I see. And I think it's happening. I know it's happening. I can see it. Anytime I walk into a random gym, I can see it happening. Um, but there's still some work to do. And, you know, it doesn't matter how many people I can like coach to like, like get the minute, kind of little bit, bit of edge on their squat form or deadlift form. What matters is that I'm getting people in the door and inspiring them and igniting their strength in, in some way. They're, they're doing all the hard work, obviously, but if I can ignite them and uplift them and then guide and educate, it's kind of like a three-part thing. It's not just, here's a vomit of all the things I've ever learned in my personal training certification. Here you go. Um, you know, that's not what it's about. And that's not my job to just spit out knowledge to people. So I am trying to reconnect with my story and stories of some of the people that I train with and how can I use those stories and share them so that people are just stoked about lifting. How do you feel like you can get someone you were saying like in the beginning, you want women to like be on the weight side rather than the cardio? Like what if I was so intimidated by the weights and I was just in the cardio, like, what would you say to me that I wanted to get over there, but I was just like way too scared and didn't know what to do? Oh, okay. Well, you know, autonomy is key. So if you never want to go over there, I'm not going to, I'm not going to drag you by your hair. <laughs> um, but I want people to know that strength is always an option. And regardless of how much weight is on the bar, there's always an opportunity to put just a tiny little bit more for the most part. Um, and I hope that the communities that we're building in our own gyms and the communities that we're building online are places that are welcoming and are friendly. Um, you know, even some of the companies that I remember seeing in like 2006 or like 2010, when I started lifting, um, they're super intimidating and scary. And it's all like these dudes and they're super athletic and they look cool. Um, but it just didn't seem like a place for me. I didn't seem like a place that I wanted to be welcome. So I think even communicating 
what we share online and how that's coming across could be the, you know, that could be like an Instagram post. If that's what you're focused on, that could be an Instagram post that lets someone know that this is a space for them. So, okay, Meg, I'm at the gym, I'm on the treadmill and really want to go to the weights. I see this like awesome girl lifting, but I don't, it's mostly bros. What do I tell myself to get myself over there? Hmm. I wish I was there with you. <laughs> so I could <laughs> just not, take though. your hand. <laughs> You're not there. <laughs> um, you know, I would remind people like what, what could go wrong? What's the worst that could happen? Um, if there is one girl there, if you're able to talk to the girl, um, yeah. that could always be a good idea. Yeah, but I will I also that. say that the strongest people usually are really friendly um, because they were at, in that space too. So they were once not so sure what they were doing and they had a community to teach them what to do in the gym or they were just a complete beginner and had no one and had to figure it out for themselves. So I think you know, it can be a really scary place because it seems like everyone has it figured out, but that is one, not necessarily the case. That girl that you see across the room could also be, it could be her first day too. You have no idea. Mm -hmm. Um, so keeping that in mind and also understanding that the stakes are super low, the stakes yeah. are really low for you to get in there and just pick up a dumbbell or just take a little lap around and, and just check out what's going on. I love that. Yes. It's, and it's funny that you say like the the fitness people, the biggest gym bros in there, they really are the nicest humans. Like fitness people are so kind and so supportive. Like maybe don't get them with their headphones on and they're in the zone, like getting ready for the squat. But like every other time they're so kind and generous. I um, was thinking about this the other day, like, cause I don't know if you have something like this, but some, a place that's very intimidating to me. And I know this is not for you because you are really awesome with your makeup, but Sephora. I can't walk in Sephora without like being very anxious. And I'll be like, oh man, I don't belong here. I don't know how to do makeup. I don't know what's going on. And sometimes I'll just walk in there and walk out because I'll be like, oh God, I don't even know what I'm getting. And so the other day I went and I was like, I'm just going to ask them, you know, if they can help me with something. And they're so kind. Of course, they want to sell their products to you and they want to help you and everything. But that's how I feel like the gym is, right? If you just ask the front desk person to like show you around, if you ask the girl in the weight room, like, Hey, would you mind spotting me or watching this or whatever? Like they're absolutely there to help you. Yes. I love that analogy to picture. I can picture you in Sephora and I know that feeling. Maybe I'm more comfortable with it now, but I remember like in years past just being like, Oh my God, everyone's watching me. And this is so awkward. Yeah. I would like, I remember going in and doing like the outside, like I wouldn't even go in the aisles. I'd just be like, I'm going to go all the way around. And then literally just like walking out. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. Do you have a place like that now? Or like, when was the last time you went in somewhere that's like felt super uncomfortable and new to you? Hmm. I feel like I'm pretty brazen just generally. And I have no shame. I have no shame. I could, I could walk in and yell if I was at the Sephora, I'd be like, I don't know what I'm doing, everybody. Somebody okay. needs to help me. That would be me at this point in my life. I wasn't yeah. always that person, but maybe I just don't, I ain't got the time for the most part. Um, so I'm just like, I know what I know and I know what I don't. So when I don't, yeah. I'm gonna raise my hand. <laughs> when was the last time you didn't know something? I mean, there's plenty that I don't know. Um, I mean, okay. imagine like trying to go camping, me at an REI. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. I'm walking straight to that front desk and asking okay. like, Hey, tell me, you got to tell me what I need. Yeah. I have a list. I already looked at a blog. I have a list of things I'm interested in. Yeah. I've never been camping before. So please help me. Um, I'm that kind of person. Like I'll okay. try to prepare as much as I can, but Love that. someone is going to be holding my hand through the store. Hopefully yeah. you also have to be pretty, you're pretty type A, right? I would say I have a mix, but yes, I try to keep things organized and yeah. Well, I mean, you have to be with all the businesses that you run and all of the organization with that, right? Well, the reason I hesitate in saying like, yes, I am is because my husband, Ryan, he handles a lot of the like operations and numbers and technical stuff. Yeah. So he is definitely way more of that than I am. I'm more on the creative side. Um, so I'm like in between, but I'm not as good as him. He's like very amazing. Um, yeah. I wish I were, but yeah. And do you guys work together on all the businesses you run as well? Yes. Okay. So you have like a creative and you have your operational like top on each 
Yeah. Like I would call yeah. it like sales and marketing on my yeah. side, which I get to be yeah. more creative. And then his is like fully operational. What are you guys most excited about going into the new year? Hmm. Well, we're preparing for Black Friday, Cyber Monday right now. So we're kind of in the thick of it, but it is exciting. We're having a huge event in a couple of weeks and I'm just excited to get people together. And, you know, I talk a lot about, you know, trying to uplift people and get them into strength training and we've have open tickets. So anyone can come to this event. I don't know. I don't think your episode will be out before it, but, um, I'm just excited to see people in person before the crazy holidays start. Um, and other than that, we're coming up on five years of stronger by the day and we haven't yet celebrated our 20,000th member. Um, but we're over 20 K. So we want to do a celebration for that during the five year to kind of commemorate all of our members and just celebrate the success of, of that business. That is so incredible to have 20,000 people in your app. It's crazy. You could fill a stadium with them. Oh my gosh. And they're all just badass chicks getting super freaking strong. It's mostly women, right? I know. I think there's some men in there too. You said, right? Yes. A lot of times we'll get men who are their partner is joining. So their wife or their girlfriend is yeah. already a stronger by the day member and they, they get their husband to join them or vice okay. versa. Um, every, every once in a while, I think we're like 98% female. Yeah. And you haven't celebrated this huge milestone. Like you better really go all out. Exactly. I know we want to do something big. We need to like plan for it. Are you, and what's the plan with the app? Like, do you have some sort of bigger picture or are you like, well, shit, I'm already at 20,000. Like anything from here is up and it's awesome. Yeah. I do sort of feel that way. Um, but obviously I look at it as I know that I have a great product, you know, in my hands, I use it every day and it really does. It is successful in demystifying strength training and it is successful in getting information into people's hands and also a plan that is proven to move them forward on their strength journey. So I feel really confident in the product and it's great to have more members. And every time a new member adds, I'm always thinking like, yes, we're like one step closer to just taking over the world of badass chicks who are super crazy strong. Um, so every time you go to the grocery store, you see nothing but jacked women. It's not a rarity to see, yeah. you know, when you go to the grocery store, you're like, Oh, she lifts. Like I haven't yes. seen a single person that lifts today, but that girl does imagine going to the grocery store. And like most women, you can tell yeah. that they're super strong. Oh, that would be so awesome. It happens every time I travel, people will be like, Oh, muscle woman. When I'm like putting my <laughs> luggage up and I'm like, yeah, sorry. It's like uh, when I'm traveling abroad or something, that'd be so cool. If there was just more people with big, strong arms, you know, see, this would be awesome. Then we have such a better time finding clothes that fit people who's wow. who lifts bodies. That's a whole nother story. Although I will <laughs> say Abercrombie has really stepped up their jean game. They're killing it. I have Maybe. a few pairs too. Yeah. I'm not like, I, I don't wear a ton of like normal clothes, but I feel like Abercrombie has really crushed it recently. Agree. You are, are you more in, are you into fashion right now too? I feel like, you know, I've been watching a lot of real housewives. Okay. Yeah. And because of that, I am into fashion because I, that's why I watch. I watch for the clothes and the yeah. glitz and glamour and just to turn my brain off for a minute because it's not helping my brain. So yeah, but um, yes, I'm, I'm semi interested in fashion. Selling sunset has a new season. I don't know if you watch that, but that's uh, <laughs> quite I've, the outfit. I've watched. They go crazy with their outfits are insane. ridiculous. It's I'm just like, okay, you girls got to get better stylists because this is just looking, they look like they're wearing Halloween costumes. They just, I feel like just want to put it the most amount of money on their body. And they're like, yes. God, it doesn't matter what it looks like. As long as it's at least a hundred thousand dollars. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. Meg. Well, this was such an awesome conversation. I like to just, you know, close out the podcast with asking what is one thing that you wish you knew before you started your fitness journey? Mm. I wish I knew how much sacrifice it took, especially in my social life to achieve my version of my aesthetic goal. And I wish I knew at the end of the day, it would just set me back. Um, I feel like I lost a lot of time during that journey. And 
I lost a lot of moments that I could have had with friends. And those are things that I'll never be able to get back. So, you know, it's really hard to say that even if I knew that, that I would have made a different decision. But I do know that now I can be confident knowing that I can have my fitness goals and my strength goals and even some aesthetic goals without completely derailing my life. And, you know, there will be balance. So I wish I wouldn't have gone so far, like married myself to the aesthetic goal so much. And I wish I would have had more of a balance of having some performance goals up there too. Yeah. And I so appreciate that because it was a lot of time that maybe you did lose, but I feel like you learned so much from it. 100%. Yeah. 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 And I think like as trainers, we have this background that we want to share the story with everyone so that we can help people not get to that point, right? The whole goal is to make it this balanced lifestyle to feel badass forever. And you can have the cake and eat it too. Yes, exactly. I love that. Yeah. So where can people find you, Meg? And tell us about product services, all the things you want to just promote right now. Yeah, you can find me anywhere on the internet at Meg Squats. So mostly on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, and you can check out Stronger by the Day. You can get a free seven-day trial if anyone's interested in, you know, performance-based strength training. It's super fun. You'll love it. Um, but it's a really great app for someone who's like thinking that they want to like get stronger in the squat bench and deadlift. Um, yeah, there's a free trial and it's a really easy to use app. And I think you'll love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Meg. I appreciate your time and all the education and knowledge that you have given us today. Thank, thank you, you so you. much. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming to this Tara Talk. I hope you're taking something away from this episode. And if so, I would love to hear about it. You can connect with me at the Tara Talk and at Tara LaFerrara on Instagram. A few ways you can help support the show and help spread the word. You can share it on Instagram, tag at the Tara Talk and at Tara LaFerrara. Send an episode to a friend and please leave a review if the show is resonating with you. It takes just a few minutes and it means so much to help this show grow and it helps me to continue to bring on badass guests for all of us to learn and grow from. I am so happy you're here and excited to be on this journey with you. Until next time, be a badass with a good ass.